Hello everyone and welcome back to IM Tech News. In this video, I'm going to explain AWS Organizations, a service that helps you manage and control multiple AWS accounts from one place. We will start by understanding what AWS Organizations is and it's a key components. Then I'll share a practical tips for designing your organizations and applying policies. Finally, we will do a quick demo to create an organization, OUs, SCP, and member accounts. So let's get started. Imagine you are managing cloud infrastructure for a growing tech company. They use separate AWS accounts for development, production, and security to stay organized. But switching between accounts, managing multiple permissions, and tracking billing is becoming a hassle. That's where AWS organizations comes in. It lets you group all AWS accounts under one umbrella and manage them centrally, saving time, improving security, and keeping everything under control. So what is AWS organization? AWS organizations is a service that helps you centrally manage and govern multiple AWS accounts. Instead of managing each account separately, you can put them all into one group and control everything from one place. Now let's go over some key components of AWS organizations step-by-step step so you understand how they all work together. At the top level, we have the organization itself. You can think of it as a container that holds and manage multiple AWS accounts under one structure. This gets created automatically when you enable AWS organization and becomes a foundation for everything else. Next is the management account, the account that was used to create the organization. This account has the highest level of permissions. It can create or invite others, manage organization-wide policies, and handle consolidated billing. Because it pays the bill for the entire organization, it's also referred to as a payer account. Within the management account, you will find the root. This is like the center point where you build the structure of your organization. From here, you start grouping accounts, creating OUs, and applying policies. Then we have member accounts. These are the other AWS accounts you bring into your organization. They can be existing accounts which are invited or newly created ones. Member accounts follow the controls and structure defined by the management account. To manage accounts more effectively, AWS provides organizational units or OUs. These help you group accounts based on environments like dev, test, prod, or teams like security networking. You can apply policies at the OU level, and all accounts inside that OU automatically inherit them. Finally, there are service control policies or SCPs. These are the guardrails for your AWS accounts. They don't give access. Instead, they limit what services or actions an account or OU can use. SCPs are great for enforcing security, compliance, and preventing risky actions across accounts. Let's see a few practical points that often come up in the real world scenarios, especially when designing your organization structure or applying policies. As we go through these points, let's refer to this diagram from the official AWS documentation. It visually shows how an organization is structured. Let's take a look. You can have multiple member accounts inside a single organization unit. An organization can contain up to 2000 organization units, giving you Plenty of flexibility to group accounts based on teams, environments, or business units. AWS allows up to 10,000 member accounts per organization, depending on your business needs and qualification, but you may need approval for that scale. Each member account can belong to only one organization at a time. Also, each member can be placed in only one OU. You can't assign the same account to multiple OUs. Service control policies are designed to restrict permissions, not grant them. You still need IAM policies for granting access. SCPs can be attached at multiple levels such as root, individual OUs, or specific member accounts and are inherited by all child accounts. For example, if you attach an SCP to the root, it applies to all the OUs and member accounts under it. And you can create nested OUs up to five levels deep, meaning you can place an OU inside another OU. Only the management account has the authority to remove accounts from the organization. And finally, with AWS organizations, billing is consolidated. All the charges from the member accounts are rolled up and visible in the management account. Now let's do a hands-on demo to see how this works in practice. First, we will enable or create an AWS organization in one account. Then we will create an organization unit and define an SCP, a service control policy that denies access to EC2. 
we will attach that policy to the OU so that any AWS account placed under it will not be able to access the EC2 instances in their own account. Next, we will either invite an existing account or create a, a new one to join our organization. Once a member account is a part of the organization, we will move it under the OU where the SCP is attached. Finally, we will log in into that member account and try to access EC2. As expected, access to EC2 should be denied. We will also try accessing other services like S3, which should still be accessible. Please understand that management account and member accounts are both regular AWS accounts. When you create an AWS organization using any AWS account, that becomes the management account. And any AWS accounts that you add under the organization becomes the member accounts. So let's head over to the AWS Management Console and begin. Log into the AWS Management Console and navigate to the AWS organization using the search bar. If it is your first time, click Create Organization and confirm it. You will see the root and the management account listed under it. Although the management account appears under the root by design, all the organization management is done from the management account. Now let's create an organization unit and SCP to deny EC2 access. In the console, select root, go to actions, and under organization unit, click create new. Give it a name, for example, dev, and click create organization unit. Now the OU dev will appear under the root. Next, let's create an SCP to deny EC2 access. In the left navigation, click on policies. Scroll down and search for service control policies. If it is currently disabled, select it and click enable service control policies. Now click on create policy, name it deny EC2 access scroll down and paste the code that denies EC2 access. This policy denies all EC2 actions on all resources for any account it is attached to. Scroll down and click Create Policy. Once created, select the policy, go to Actions, and click Attach Policy. Then select OU Dev and click Attach Policy. Now let's create a member account and add it under OU Dev. Go to AWS Accounts in the left navigation pane. At the top right, click on Add an AWS Account. Here, you can invite an existing AWS account by providing account ID or email address. And scroll down and click Send Invitation. And the invited account owner needs to go to the invitations in their account and accept it. However, we will create a, a new AWS account. Give it a name, for example, member account, and provide a valid email address. Make sure no AWS account has been created with that email address before, otherwise the creation will fail. Then click Create AWS Account. Let's wait for the account to be created. After doing a refresh, I can see that the account is created and appears under the root. Now let's move the member account under the OU dev. Go back to the console. Select the member account, go to Actions, click Move, and select Dev, and click Move AWS Account. Now, if you check under Dev, you will see the member account. The last step is log into the member account and check if the service control policy is working as expected. Since we created a new AWS account through AWS organization, you need to set the password first. Go to aws.amazon.com and click on sign in, enter the email address used during the account creation, and click next. Click forgot password. You will receive an email to reset your password, set a new password, and log in into the AWS Management Console. Once logged in, you can verify that you are in the correct member account by checking the AWS account ID, ending with 1991. It should match the member account ID shown in the AWS organization. Go back to the member account, now go to EC2 using the search bar and click Launch Instance. Give the instance a name like Test 
and try selecting any configuration. It will throw an error stating that the action is not valid or you don't have necessary permissions. Okay, so this confirms that all EC2 actions are being denied as intended. Next, let's check if S3 is allowed. So go to S3, click create bucket, enter a globally unique name, scroll down and click create bucket. You should be able to create the bucket successfully, confirming that only EC2 actions are denied while other services like S3 remain accessible. And that's how you use AWS organization to centrally manage multiple AWS accounts, making it easier to stay secure, organized, and in control. Now coming to the cleanup, when you have member accounts, you cannot delete the AWS organization. You need to either close the member account or remove them from the organization. If we try to remove the member account from AWS organization, we must convert into a standalone AWS account by providing details like full name, contact information, a credit card, and billing address. Since we created this AWS account through AWS organization, let's close this account by going to actions and click close. Give account ID when prompted and click close account. Now, after closing the account, I need to wait for the 90 day post closure period to end and for the linked account to be permanently closed. Only then will I be able to close the organization associated with this account. Post 90 days, go to settings in the left navigation, scroll down, and click delete organization. Confirm it by giving the organization ID and then click delete organization. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and happy learning.